I think the, the critical factor is to realize that it is one of the most complex situations anywhere in the world. It involves all the major powers. No other place in the world involves directly all the major powers like the Korean Peninsula. So there's a whole level, series of levels of how this has to be looked at. The process of opening North Korea is very much hindered by the con continuing Korean War. It's basically a civil war where North Korea can't afford to open up because people will learn what has been happening to them for those 60 years. They know that, uh, the North Koreans know that they live a difficult life, that South Koreans live better, but they don't know how, how much better. And the information is simply not uh, circulating. So nothing is going to change in North Korea until two things. Until the, mem the mem members of the league, uh, Kim Jong-un himself, or some of his close associates, decide voluntarily, decide to mendle with, um, with, with the system. Try to improve it, or try to change it, like open up, or, or something like that. So any, any drastic change in North Korea can be initiated from, from the top only. People simply at the moment don't have any power to, to ask questions or demand anything. They're too weak, there's no communications. Um, that's one possibility. Another possibility is, um, mm, well, the major change in uh, international, regional, policies, first of all, unless we dismantle the, the structures of the Cold War, which we inherited from the 1950s and 60s, and the Korean War was the um, hot, hot war of the Cold War in, in East Asia, unless we start, unless we stop thinking from the, these dimensions of Cold War confrontation, say we are the allies of freedom-loving uh, South Korea, Japan, and the United States, and they Russia, China, and North Korea uh, against us. The cobweb of the six countries involved in the six party talks of their own bilateral relationships is very intense. My American colleague, uh, eight years back in Seoul, Stephen Bosworth, who's now, uh, well, has been <coughs> a special US envoy into North Korea. And he summed it up, I think, pretty well by saying, China has more influence on North Korea than they let on, but not as much as the rest of the world assumes. <laughs> and I think that's pretty well where we are. So Beijing is uh, very, very paranoid about what is happening in its eastern borders. So any live fire exercises, particularly for joint South Korean, American, Japanese exercises, um, hurts and paranoids China very much. So China has no other way but to support North Korea. China does not want to wake up one morning and see that American troops advance from the from Faisal, from uh, Panmunjom, closer to, to the Chinese Sino Korean border. It's not. Uh, it, it's it's going not, not not going to be supported by China. So they will do. Uh, Beijing will do everything to buttress uh, the regime, both economically and politically. In South Korea, the current uh, conservative government of Lee myung bak uh, well, the election year the, might or might not bring um, the opposition to power. We will see what happens. Obama administration will also might um, actually inherit some uh, positive, constructive approach to uh, North Korean issue, or something similar to what during the Obama uh, during the Clinton administration. In that case, some change in inter inter Korean relations might be possible. The critical thing is that. What happens inside Korea, inside the two Koreas, is very important, critical. But even more important is the international environment in which this all takes place. And particularly, I think, in these days when we're spending a lot of uh, effort in Australia and elsewhere at trying to crystal ball where China and US relationships may go. Korea sits firmly in the middle of that environment, both as a possible cause of problems for China and the US, or indeed as a situation which China might want, for example, to um, excite a little in return for the pressure it sees from the United States, which they find unpleasant, e.g. Taiwan. And I think many in South Korea have lived for a long while just worried about that. 
that does Korea become the sideshow to a US-China long-term confrontation? I think what we talk about what's happening in North Korea, who's going to do who to what, always has to be seen against the backdrop of where does it fit in? And in the end, will Koreans either south or north dictate the way it's, it evolves? I think the answer is probably not, but the Koreans will see it differently both sides. If we just talk about the, the importance of the US North Korean network, two, two important considerations there. One is the Americans have never successfully been able to manage that. They've had three or four, not failures, well, one failure certainly, but certainly others where they've mishandled the, the thing. Not understanding the North Koreans, which is a huge uh, challenge. And the worst of those was the infamous ABC policy. Anything but Clinton. When George Bush was elected, in foreign policy terms, they put on on the shelf for at least six months any of the Clinton initiatives of foreign policy, the worst being the Korean one. And that was a chance when we might have actually got to the next stage in the Second Party talks, but it was lost. And this year, we have both an American election and a South Korean election. So those are two big cards to play in this. How are they going to work out? Clearly, um, the Republican position on North Korea is as hard as you can get. Um, and that was not going to make things easy. Uh, it won't make things easy for Obama being, to be too flexible in this period. He would have to be watching over his shoulder all the time for the domestic side. In the South, uh, we've seen already that President Kim jong -un has actually softened his tone in the last six months towards North Korea. The good piece of news, on the 23rd of February, the Americans and North Koreans are going to meet again. Having been delayed for so long, they're actually going to meet and discuss where things go. The problem with uh, this North Korean nuclear issue is that uh, not, um, the United States, first of all, does not want to recognize the status. And North Korea finds this very offensive. It's kind of double standard. Although we have the nuclear bomb, we have the carriers, we don't, well, um, India and Pakistan have the same. They have developed it after the non-proliferation treaty was signed. Um, why, why everyone accepts India and Pakistan as nuclear powers but not us? Um, well, double standards. Two big elements there to worry about. One is that, as with the, uh, the Vietnamese talks, which I had myself much more involved in, the question of who sits at the table, who talks, becomes so important. If you're in South Korea, the population almost double that of North Korea now, and certainly much more powerful in, in all sorts of other ways. It's pretty galling to be sitting there hearing the Americans and North Koreans talking one on one, and you're not there. So the Americans have lots of difficulty, and the South Koreans have lots of difficulty presenting to their own public how this is going on. So that would be one one key element. Uh, sadly for the South Koreans, or, and for the Americans, the opposition in South Korea has now come out with a very sol solid attack against the FTA, which was signed last year between South Korea and the US. And uh, this, this could cause enormous difficulties between both countries, particularly as protectionism is growing in the United States. And there's no way that Obama could get a repeat of that at this stage. 